Okay, you ready? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to JSA TV and JSA Podcast. We are covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from the leaders in the digital infrastructure industry. We are here live at DCD London at the Business Design Center in Islington, London. Very excited to be here. It is day two and a bright and early start for us mm -hmm. at 9 a.m. here in London. Um, so our very first guest in the hot seat today is Sean McGuire, SVP and Global Head of Data Center Strategy for Black Box. Mm -hmm. So welcome and thank, thank you for joining you. Thank us. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we'll jump right in. Sure, let's go. <laughs> As everyone is doing today at the conference, right? Um, let's so, have at it. yeah, yeah. So, what sets Black Box apart? A very kind of easy first question. I'm sure it, you talk about this a lot, even down at the exhibit hall, right? Like, what sets you all apart in helping data center op operators navigate this increasingly complex mm -hmm, landscape mm -hmm. that we're all talking about? Sure. So, you know, it's, um, and I'm from the States. Mm -hmm. I flew in from Dallas a couple of days ago and you know, I know it's here as well, but in the States that just the velocity of announcements that are coming out, um, I think really for us, the fact that black box comes from the supply chain background first, mm -hmm. that's kind of where we originally uh, came from. And so starting in the product side, building up a global supply chain, and then really the systems that support that. And then as we built our hyperscale infrastructure division, we're able to leverage those uh, processes across you know, our, our platform with our key hyperscale and co-location clients. Excellent. I love that. Nice and succinct. That was, <laughs> that was a good start too. Um, so can you talk a little bit about your global presence mm -hmm. um, and how you're, you're basically leveraging that to deliver speed, safety, consistency across mm -hmm. regions. That's really critical right now in the AI era. Yeah, sure. Great question. So we are currently in 35 countries. Mm -hmm. um, we are a part of a, a multinational conglomerate by the name of SR Group mm -hmm. that is headquartered out of Mumbai, India. And uh, our U.S. headquarters is in Plano, Texas. And, you know, you talked about safety, mm -hmm. uh, you know, speed, um, consistency. And I think for us, it really kind of extends even beyond that, right? Because, you know, velocity at scale is really the big thing. And mm -hmm. so for us, when we talk to our clients, we're talking about how do we give them business certainty, right? How are we able to meet their schedules on time, on budget, um, and to do it with a high degree of safety, mm -hmm quality, cost effectiveness, I mean, the whole nine yards. And so for us, what we've figured out is that the only way you can do that is if you factor in modular prefabrication. So really, when you're doing the core and shell of the infrastructure of the, of the building, mm -hmm. you really need to be building in parallel, just like they've done in the electrical and mechanical systems for years with skids, yeah. and then sliding that in at the last minute. So in the last week, we've seen announcements from Schneider and Cupus data centers. I'm looking around the trade show floor and I'm seeing three or four different companies. And so you're seeing more and more solutions that really leverage that modular build out in the white space. Amazing. Yeah, you can't see it, obviously, on home if you're joining us uh, back at home or if you're listening to the podcast, but mm -hmm. we are on the second floor here and we're looking over the exhibit hall so mm -hmm. we can quite literally see, you know, a bunch of the movers and shakers in digital infrastructure from our kind of vantage point up yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> so it's been it's, a great turnout too. I think they said over 4,000 people, so pretty awesome. Yeah, amazing. It's it's definitely uh, buzzing and I was here last year. This is our second year doing JSA TV here mm -hmm. and it feels even busier than last year, which yeah, felt quite yeah. busy at the time as well. Um, okay, so we've heard, of course, a lot about liquid cooling this mm -hmm. week and at every digital infrastructure conference, you know, ever this year. Yeah, um, so yeah. it is one of the big, big uh, key topics mm -hmm. of the day, it seems. Um, so how are hyperscalers managing this big shift that's happening with liquid cooling? Sure, you know, it's and it's really is dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'll use uh, I'll use an, a real life example. So probably even four years ago working with Meta, they were looking mm -hmm. at some site selection in, in uh, Temple, Texas, South mm -hmm. Texas. Um, went through the whole process, um, ended up acquiring the land, started the construction process, built up the steel, and then put a halt to the project. Mm -hmm. The reason being, the technology is advancing so rapidly, they had no idea that they were gonna be shifting from air-cooled systems to more water-cooled, whether it was rear door heat exchanger or direct to chip. Uh, you know, and really at that time, AI was really just starting, not even really ramping yet. And so they had to take a look internally to go, you know, we've already invested probably what, 40, $50 million to this point. Do we tear everything down? Do we, you know, do we, do we rethink everything? And that's exactly what they did. They ended up tearing down all the steel and they had to start all over again. And so what's happening is, you know, I, I'll use the analogy. If you have uh, someone parachuting out of a plane, right? <clears throat> they're wanting to hold on to their decisions on final design until the very last minute, right? So 
one second later, if you pull the rip cord, you know, it's not a, a happy ending. Mm. But if you do it right before, that gives you your greatest chance to have that flexibility and to be real and to really have the latest um, information in terms of the best way to, to build your, your facilities. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of that is they want to have that prefabrication, but they need to balance, balance that with having options up to the very last minute. Puts a lot of pressure on the supply chain, yeah. you know, the manufacturers, all of us, the, tra the trade partners, but that's who we're working for, right? So we're, you know, we're really focused. And, you know, the whole thing about the supply chain is, you know, and I, I think about Chris Crosby at Compass Data Centers. So mm -hmm. I think he's really done it right, is he's really big on early engagement, in the design uh, phase, not just with the architects and engineers, but also with the GCs, the, the critical trade partners, so that everyone's really working together early on to be able to deliver in the, in the, in the best manner possible. Love that. Well, I'm feeling the pressure with that analogy. So yeah. I think everyone is a little bit. We all are. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So and on the liquid cooling, just to, you know, mm -hmm. round that out, um, I want to mention, and let me make sure I get this right. It's sure. uh, You have a DCD talk this afternoon here at DCD yes. London. It's mm -hmm. called Implementing Liquid Cooling at Scale at 3.30. So yes. if anybody's mm -hmm. watching this live and wants to wants to see Sean on that uh, session, mm -hmm. make sure to check it out at 3.30. Yep. Well, awesome. thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. You. It was great meeting you. Yeah. It was all great right. to meet you. Right. And thank you to all of our viewers for hanging out with us for our very first interview live from yep. DCD London. We will be uh, we will be doing interviews for the next, I believe, four hours. So mm -hmm. just hang out with us for a little bit longer here. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Happy networking. Thank you. Thank you.